Hi everyone, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today I'm going to tell you how to create envelope labels with Adobe InDesign Data Merge. All right, let's get started. Okay, so a data merge in InDesign generally consists of three different documents. First, you have the data source file. That's going to look something like this. You will also have a target document, which in the end will look something like this. And then you'll have the final merge document, which will look something like this. Now first, let's tackle the data source file. Now this is set up in either Excel or just a spreadsheet document like uh, Google Sheets. Since I don't have Excel on this computer, I'm using Google Sheets, but it works exactly the same way in Excel. So all I've done here is in the first row, nothing is special about this. I just typed the word title, then I typed first name, last name, street address, etc. The way InDesign works is it knows to pull from that first row. So as long as your category names are your first row, you'll be good to go. And then just go ahead and fill out all of this information. Now, when you export your file, you cannot have any other information in the file. So we'll need to get rid of all of this information out here. I'll just highlight it and hit delete. Oh, and there's a little extra over here delete that. Okay, so all we have is what's in these first five columns. So now we'll go to file, download, and comma separated values. Now in Excel, this is probably going to be something like file save as CSV or file export as CSV. But in Google Sheets, it's down here under download. So we'll do this and it's saved down here in my downloads. And I'm just going to overwrite this one. We'll replace it. Okay, so that takes care of our data source file. Now the envelope label I'm using is an Avery 8160, and I wanna look for a template. So I'm just gonna put Avery 8160 template into Google and see what comes up. Okay, and here the first result is the Avery website and they actually give us how big the address labels are, which we will need to know that for later. And it says how many per sheet. And then you can actually download an InDesign file. You do have to put um, your email address in and stuff like that, but let's go ahead and download it. And I'm gonna open this document. Okay, I really recommend not using the document that you just downloaded. The only reason I'm using it now is to find out uh, my margins and to see the space in between the labels. I actually started out using this InDesign template and I could not get the mail merge to work. So I recommend starting with a brand new document and not using this template. Let's zoom in a little bit here. We already know from the website that each label is one inch by two and five eighths. So let's go ahead and start a new document with command N. We're gonna come over here to print and since we're in the US, we use letter, and that's what size this template is also. Make sure to turn off facing pages, and then we'll create the document. And now I'm going to hit T, and I'm just going to draw a box. And then I'll get my uh, selection tool. Right now we're in points, but I need to be in inches. So I'll control or right click the ruler and change it to inches. And I have to do the same over here. And now we've got 2.875, I actually want that to be two and five eighths. So I'm gonna do five divided by eight, and then I'm just going to add two to the front. So it's 2.625, and then the height is one inch. So this is the size of our label. So we've got that in there and that's great, but now we need to figure out the margins. So let's go back to our Avery 8160, and I'm going to draw a little box right over here and it looks like our margin on the right and left is 0.19. So I'm gonna copy that. I'll come back to our new document and I'm going to hit Option Command P or Control Alt P on a PC. We're going to undo this little link and then change the, the left and the right to 0.19. We'll say okay. And as you can see, it kind of matches uh, the other one now. So let's grab our little box with the selection tool 
and do the same thing to find out that top margin. Okay, so it's 0.5. I'll highlight that and copy it. And we'll come to our new document, hit Option Command P or Control Alt P on a PC to get our document set up. And then um, it looks like our top and bottom are already 0.5. So that is great. We'll say, okay, I'm going to zoom in here and with my V tool, the selection tool, I'm just going to pull this exactly up into that margin. It should kind of snap into place over there. And now let's hit Command B or Control B on a PC to get our text frame options. We don't want our text to go right up to the edge of the label. So we want our inset spacing to be maybe about 0.1875. We can change this later. Make sure this little link is linked. So we'll say, okay. All right, so now let's start the merge process. Go to Window, Utilities, and Data Merge. And that'll bring up this little window. It actually gives us some instructions, which is nice, but I'll just walk you through the process. So we'll go up here to the flyout and choose select data source. And wherever you saved that CSV file from your Excel document or Google sheet, find that and then just click and open. And you might get this text box, but probably won't. This comes from having import options checked when you're doing that last step. Okay. We'll say, okay. And now you can see it's brought in all of those categories from the top row of the Excel document. We've got title, first name, last name, street address, and city. So I'm just going to hit T on my keyboard to get my text tool. I'll just click in here and I'm going to click title. I didn't add any spaces after things. So I'm just going to add them here in my document. So I'm going to hit the space bar. Then we'll add the first name space last name. And then I want a hard return. So this is going to say like Mr. Ben Smith. So I want a hard return after this line. Then I'll add my street address, then another hard return, and then the city, which the city actually includes the city, state, and zip code. Okay, so now I'm going to select all of these and I think the font, the font is pretty big. So I'm gonna knock that down to 10. I'm gonna choose a different font here. We'll choose Arial regular. And that's all you need to do for setting up the target document. Now we need to merge these. And to do that, it's this little button right here, create merge document. And then we get another window that comes up. Okay. So we want all records in the document for the records per document page. We don't want just this one. We want a lot of records. We want all of them that we can fit. InDesign will put as many as possible on one page. So you can't tell it like three columns, 10 rows. It doesn't work that way. It just puts as many as it knows will fit on there. So anyway, we'll choose multiple records. And this is just a little graphic that shows what it should do. These two things are fine to leave checked. And then we'll go to multiple record layout. Your margins should match the margins you put in on the document. So these are correct. And then um, you can arrange by either rows first, if you want to do it that way or columns first. I usually do rows first, but it's whatever you want for the spacing. I've actually measured and the spacing between the columns is 0.12 inches. And then there's no space between the row. And I'll show you that. I'll just say, okay. And you can see it created the document just the way it was supposed to. But I want to show you uh, that template that we had. You can see this space in between here. When I draw a little box, it comes up to 0.12. I already measured that ahead of time, but you know, you'll want to get the amount of space between your columns and then here it's zero. Okay. Let's go back to our merge document. You can see, you might want to change some things about, um, the inset text. So if we wanted to kind of center this more, we're going to want to make that inset text margin on the left, a little bit bigger and maybe on the top. So we could just go back into our, uh, into our target document, click command B, unclick this link, and then increase the left margin a little bit and possibly the top margin. Maybe not quite that much. And we'll say, okay. And then you can just run it again. This all looks good. We'll say, okay. So now it's creating that third document, which is the merged document. 
And this one looks much better. Everything looks pretty centered. Now it's funny, I have exactly 30 records. And so it stops right here at 30. But if you have 35, it's gonna create a new page automatically for you. Now I've noticed that this process for me anyway has been pretty glitchy. One little thing wrong and it'll sort of make it fail. So if you're having any issues, just leave those in the comments section below. All right, that's my video for this week. If you're interested in longer courses, I have a few out on Skillshare, so you can check those out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you.